Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Taya and this is Alexandria, my medieval cloud core island. We're actually going to be working on the medieval town area. I want to work on a couple of villager houses, namely Lily's house, Becky's house, and Colton's house. Now this is the second build that I'm doing with the actual medieval part of my island. The first build was of course the entrance. I actually have had the pathing planned out for this area for a really long time and that's just so that I could get used to it and figure out whether or not that was what I actually wanted to do with this area, live with it for a bit and that was incredibly helpful when it came to build. Hello everybody and welcome to the voiceover portion of the video. I'm your host Taya, the same person who introduced you to the video except for now I it's just a disembodied voice. Um, this is going really well. <laughs> So I started working on Colton's house and I didn't really do a whole lot with Colton's house. The main thing that I like about his house is just that it's an interesting shaped yard. It kind of flows down like that because I have some water, a little water inlet area there with a bridge that goes over to Abel's sister. So his yard is a little shorter than the other two. So I just kept it really simple, put a storefront and these short, simple panels, mm, they are not getting enough love. They are so helpful for when you just want to display like a little bit of the design. They're excellent like I used here for covering over half of the storefront. I think I consider Colton's house to be like the warm up for this build. Like this was just me trying to figure out and get my head around it. I've actually done a few different iterations of this neighborhood already and tried to place down items and then I found myself getting carried away. I've done different variations of fencing all over the place, testing out a lot of stuff to make sure that I was going to be happy with whatever I decided to do in the final version, trying to make fake buildings in between the actual buildings. But what I ended up going with were these like streets that go between the houses and you'll see when i start to fill it in a little bit more it makes a lot more sense why there are these rows and it looks a lot more compact and like a actual medieval village um, once the terraforming is in place behind the buildings a little bit and once i put in medieval building sides everywhere so yeah i've been testing out different variations of this but i kept always removing them because i was like well that's a good experiment <laughs> and now i have to actually record a real video so i didn't want to get too ahead of myself but i did want to make sure that i had enough items and that i had um you know just everything planned out and i was going to be able to do it and I had gone through like my couple rough tests before sharing the final build with you guys. So yeah, I was really happy with the simple kind of backdrop that I gave to Colton's house. And I ended up moving on to uh, Becky's house, I think, after this. The one thing that I really wanted to make sure of when I was doing these builds is that all of it felt very cohesive and cluttered and full like an actual medieval town slash village. Right now in the lore of my island, we are in the like built up castle city. So this is within the walls of the city and everything that's like commerce and the people who really want to be like protected inside the walls of the city are here. So that's why we have Becky and we have Colton and Dom and Lily, but Lily will be replaced with Renee eventually. I keep saying that, but seriously, Sterling is driving me crazy and I don't know if he's going to stay on the island forever. So I might actually keep Lily around and move Colton out and put Renee in his, not Colton, Sterling out and put Renee in his place as the second castle guard uh, alongside Knox. And I think that that would actually be like so perfect. And I would give Renee all her like little knight costumes. I think it would be like super cool because she's just the coolest. And I've always wanted her as a sisterly because I think she's perfect. Uh, anyways. That is going to be like, if I hype her up too much, then it's going to be like another jam bed hunt. I'm never going to freaking find this girl. It's so hard when you really do want a villager. It's like they just know and they just do not show up. I feel like with the lily hunt right now on Papagayu, I'm getting like a little bit stressed out that I'm never going to find her. But we're going to find her. We're going to find her one way or another. Back to this build. I'm just putting in some fencing. I'm 
I put a tree, I put a couple of trees in Lily's yard, but I end up moving them around a little bit because Lily's yard is my favorite. I'm not gonna spoil it. I'm not gonna spoil it. It's my favorite. I really do like this stall pattern that I used in Becky's yard. I gave her like a little food market. I can't be really much more specific than that because I put like bread, I put this bathtub with yuzu. I think I even give her some wheat and a little vegetable basket and that kind of thing. So it's not really any specific food, but it's like baked goods and vegetables and that kind of thing. She's just a food market kind of person. So I gave her like a little stoneware kitchen in the back, but I end up removing that as well because Lily's build is so good and it was kind of like taking away from Lily's build on that side. So, so exciting. I really have to work on getting Happy Home Paradise completed because I need to change the exteriors of these houses so bad. Colton's house looks very proper and fancy for what I would like in this like medieval town area. Becky's house, of course, is like purple and red. I don't know. It doesn't, <laughs> her aesthetic is like, it's okay. It really fits the medieval aesthetic, but her house is just so purple. I cannot handle it. So we definitely need to get her house with like some more yellow and brown tones, maybe a little bit of red still. I hope to keep their house styles the same, if that makes sense, but just change the colors of them for the most part. I think that Colton's really fancy door has to go, but other than that, um, I'm going to try to keep their houses, the uh, original intention of them pretty intact. And I am insanely obsessed with that tiny little fortune cookie cart that just pokes halfway out into the, into the like laneway there. It's so cute. And just adds a little bit more depth to that, um, especially with the flag there as well. I move the flag to the other side. So much of this build was just trial and error, putting things down and then living with it for a bit. And I think that that's going forward the way that I'm going to try to do a lot of my builds is like building them out and then letting it sit for a little bit and then coming back to it and changing it if I want. I know that there's a lot of like, it's it's not a real pressure, but it's a pressure that I feel to like put items down and just be done with it. Uh, but that's not the way that it goes. That's not realistic to the way that actual build, builds happen. As everybody knows on their own islands, you put things down and then you live with it for a bit and you decide that's not what I want at all and you tear it down, you make it again. That is not the case with Lily's house though. I am obsessed with Lily's house and most of the items I just put it down first try and was like, absolutely yes. I decided to turn her house into a tavern and I'm so happy guys. This like covered counter item Actually, I just realized that most of these items in her area are 2.0 items. So like this would not have been possible without 2.0 items. I searched for tavern and I found this adorable little like beer mug. I think I'm actually going to make my own Alexandria specific tavern logo eventually. There are a lot of custom designs that I have to work on for this island. And I'm thinking that I would like to make a video where I'm just working on the different custom designs because of course we have the cloud design that has not been released yet. And I know people are asking for it. Just please be patient with me. I will get the cloud path out eventually. And I have some other custom designs that I have to release for Alexandria, but I've just been loving building on this island. So I haven't gone back to actually refine those pathways. So, but I will, and I will let you know when they're released. Let me know if you would like to actually have like a whole video on custom designs. I know that there are awesome tutorials out. Peachy Llama has actually made an awesome tutorial on custom designs and how to build them. And I definitely found that super helpful. But if you would like to see my process for making custom designs, please let me know in the comments below. I have so many video ideas right now that are just on the table. So hit that subscribe button. I never say that. I literally never say that. That's why it came out the most awkward way possible. Um, but yeah, I am going to be doing a room tour soon. I'm also going to be painting a switch case very soon. So those are some like IRL content ideas that need to happen. 
and freaking if Jambet will just move to Papagayu, then we can move on with our lives and hopefully restart Jungle Core to do Japanese city slash cyberpunk island, which I am so excited for. And I just need her to show up. Maybe that's why she's not showing up. She's like, I know you're going to delete my home in like two seconds after I move into the island. Do you think I'm going to show up so you can like kick all these villagers out of their homes? She doesn't know that I'm going to get her one way or another. <laughs> and also Shino was the pub's first customer. So that was pretty funny. <laughs> And I decided to make Colton's place even simpler by taking away some furniture items that just made it feel really cluttered and were kind of pulling the lag down for no good reason at all. And while I went to go and start doing the voiceover for this video, I got an awesome idea for Colton's house. I'm going to make him the resident blacksmith. So he is going to be doing like making horseshoes, which is perfect because he's a horse. Oh my gosh. And there's a little section of land right in front of his house that's like across the road from his house. And that's where I'm going to make his little blacksmith shop. And I cannot wait. And I need to get some horseshoe designs or make some myself. And I'm going to make him the little blacksmith. I have so many ideas now that I just got started on this area. And that's what I can say. Like if you're hemming and hawing about an idea that you've had for a while and you're just not sure how to do it, just start with whatever you can with whatever you've got in your inventory and just start making something. And then before you know it, you're going to get into a rhythm and it's going to start to flow. Like this build, I felt like it took a long time for me to finally hit my stride with this build. And somehow doing this tavern for Lily was like exactly what I needed to kind of get back into that medieval mindset. And I am living for it. Like, I don't know why this tavern, it's like the smallest build ever, but it makes me so freaking happy. And we had a campsite villager. I always get super excited when there's a campsite visitor because like there's so much potential. It was Poppy, who I love, who is a horse, but we just, we couldn't take him. We don't have room right now. I'm waiting for a couple more photos, like Lily's photo. She asked to move out and I was like, no, I want your photo first. You're not going anywhere. Maybe that's why she's not giving me her photo because really deep down inside, she doesn't want to leave Alexandria and she knows once she gives me her photo, she's probably going to get out the next time that she asks. But I have enjoyed having Lily on my island so much. And I just don't want to get beef with her. Like if she could give me her photo anytime, then we could avoid having beef between us and that would be amazing. <laughs> so I was getting to a point on this particular build day where I didn't know exactly know where to go with that side of the pub. I just laid down some pathing and decided to give my brain a little break, give a couple days and come back to it with fresh eyes, which is exactly what I did two days later. This is where I left off. I actually took down some walls because I wasn't a fan of how much the wall was poking out here into the walkway. I think it's just the color of Becky's house that is throwing off everything. If I just put a hand over her house and look at the rest of it, I'm happy with it. I'm also happy with the height of this here tree. So I'm gonna stunt this tree right here. Not too much more to do, but enough to do that I wanted to do a little bit more on it with you. I think I'm going to invite Papa Gayuteo over. Huh, that could work. There's just an awkward half space here now. That helps a little bit. I'm not a big fan of having terraforming immediately in front of resident services, but I think I'm just gonna make like a little chunk of terraforming here. We'll see how it goes. Like a little balcony almost, you know, like an upstairs level to this building. Delivery time. When worlds collide. So I'm just giving myself a little delivery over here, bringing myself some items that I don't yet have DIYs for on this island. It's a lot of clotheslines because I think that that's a very like homey 
kind of an item that I can use in a lot of places. Plus, Papagayu is going to be restarted very soon, so I am willing to part with any additional items that I haven't really used to this point. And I'm going to give Lone Miss Papagayu some Nook Miles tickets because the hunt for Jambet, as of recording this, is still continuing. I'm gonna hunt today with the Goldie branches and hopefully we can find our baby Jambet. Do I even have tickets here? Well, never mind. I don't have any Nook Miles tickets on Alexandria to give you. I'm sorry, little Miss Papagayu. Do I have anything else that I can give to Papagayu? I'm not really gonna use these tropical plants. It's not much, but there's a couple of things that hopefully are helpful to myself. <laughs> well, bye. <laughs> So we got a bunch of stuff. I also dropped off some unassessed fossils because I have a lot of those on Papagayu and hopefully I can get the one single fossil that is left for the museum. <laughs> Mastodon? I think it's the Mastodon skull that I'm missing. The only thing that I'm missing. Oh my gosh, you're too cute, Lily. Marshall? Hello? Once I put that gate down, it made a huge difference for just like dividing the houses, but also dividing this neighborhood area from resident services without it being too divided. You know, you can still see resident services behind there, you still know what's going on back there. And up on these little cliffs behind the houses, I did a little laundry area behind Becky's house. I think it looks super cute, like a balcony or something where somebody is drying their laundry. Uh, away from the street level, which is probably pretty nasty because it's medieval times right now. And for the life of me, I don't know why it was so difficult to place down this one clothesline. It just did not cooperate. It was being so frustrating and I wanted it to be the opposite. Like I wanted the shirt to be on the left hand side. So I ended up removing this little chunk of terraforming so that it's only a four by, like it's a two by two little square. And then because trees make everything better, I just placed a tree down and a loft bed beside this cliff area to kind of soften it and to not bring as much attention to the cliff edges. And yes, the loft bed gave me a lot of grief before it went into proper position. <laughs> when in doubt, just put a tree. And maybe we need like another tree over here, but like slightly tucked back, maybe right on this corner. Am I adding too many trees to this area? Is there such a thing? I don't think so. I don't think there's such a thing as too many trees. I think you're lying. <laughs> this does hide resident services a little bit, which I'm not a huge fan of. Dang it. I have these trees that are not quite fully grown. So I'm going to hijack one of these ones, but I don't want that tree. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh dear. I'm going to stunt this one while I remember. Okay. So this one is going to be a little tree and this one is a big tree. And then from over here, you just get this view of like between here, the two trees. I really like the vibes that this is giving off. And I have a simple kettle to put onto this wooden box. I'm not sure if we need another laundry area back here, or maybe we just want it to be like a little bit of storage for the pub. Just a confetti machine blowing some stuff into the wind over here. That's kind of fun. You can never have too many clothes lines. Well, maybe you can. That's fun. Just a little bit of confetti coming up over the edge of there. Now I just want to make a little pig pen and then I'm gonna make like a little laundry doing beach. Look at Lily in her little frugal dress. Like how cute and baby. Another example of not really knowing quite what I was going to build before I actually started building was this pig pen. I knew somewhere on my island that I wanted to have a pig pen and preferably in this little city area, but I had never actually 
thought of this little chunk right here by the river mouth, which if you think about it is pretty nasty, but also pretty on point with what would have happened in medieval times. There is literally pigs right beside their main waterway for their fresh water. So, um, and where they wash their clothes. People are nasty in medieval times. That's all you need to know. People were just straight up nasty. It should be dirt underneath the pigs, shouldn't it? Dang it. Okay, come with me, piggies. It should be dirt underneath you. And yes, it looked so much better once I put a dirt pathing underneath. I'll just blow through adding that dirt path underneath the pigs. And then it also gave me the opportunity to put weeds in between where the pigs were going. I also added this hay bale and a pile of leaves just to give a little bit more texture to the ground and also like pigs gotta play in the leaves and they gotta have a little bit of hay for them to eat. So it was very functional, very practical and little piggies are hopefully very happy in their little pen. There is a lot of them in this pen so it's a little bit cramped but what are you gonna do? It's medieval times, what are you gonna do? But I honestly think that these pigs were like one of the cutest additions to the game. And there's so many different variations of them. I'm not sure if I have every variation of piggy bank in this build, but I, it, they're the most realistic ones. I think that there are other ones that are brighter colors, but these are the ones that I really like. And I moved on to the laundry beach. I didn't really spend a whole lot of time on this laundry beach. I just put down a bunch of clotheslines and a little campfire and some wash bins a bucket, a little a couple log benches for people to sit on, and then I went in with some seaweed and also some Cosmo stems to add a little bit more texture to the ground. I really love this wooden plank path that I have going on here. I'll put, of course, all of the codes down in the description below, but this was the final little touch that I had to add to this overall neighborhood build, which I think really completes it and makes it feel more full and realistic. So that was it for this build, guys. Enjoy some final shots and thoughts. All right, everybody. I think that that is going to do it for this neighborhood build. It got a little out of hand, a lot more than I was anticipating to do. But I love the walkthrough. We have like the community well, it's kind of the connection point between all the different themes. You have the more foresty side and then you have up here a little bit of a nature spot, but I think it's gonna be a little bit cloud-like up here just so you introduce you to all the different themes right out of the gate, so to speak. But if you come through to the right-hand side of the entrance, then you have Lily's little tavern. I think it turned out great, I love the green accents and eventually this will be Renee's house so I think it'll go a lot better with her personality but for now it's Lily's house and I think it looks super cute then we have like this entrance way Sterling is gonna demonstrate to the plaza what are you wearing Sterling I did not give that to you anyways you have the nice little gate that goes over to resident services and you have Becky's house and she has a little like food market area very fittingly in front of her food market there is a little pig pen here with a few different kinds of pigs coming down onto this laundry beach a little bit of a placeholder not super fleshed out but i think that the lag is already starting in this area so i want to kind of chill out and then see how it goes with the lag and take away some items if i need to and we have colton's house i'm obsessed i hope that you all enjoyed and thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next one bye everybody